let me start by giving a background to my paper. In spite of change in government since 2015, Nigeria, like most African countries, is still confronted by tremendous security challenges such as terrorism, insurgency, militancy, armed robbery, commercial hostage taking, lineage of Funani has men, pipeline vandalization, among others. As a result, some have gone to the extreme of declaring Nigeria a failed state. But the moderates like me insist that Nigeria is not yet a failed state, rather a failing state. A failing state is that state which is rapidly heading towards a first state. Why a first state in a shorthand is a state that is no longer capable of effectively controlling or governing a greater part or whole of its territory. But do we wait till Nigeria becomes a failed state to act? No. <coughs> it is perhaps a tourism that modern state is charged with the responsibility of maintaining law and order. In fact, the present the etat of the state is self-preservation. Thus, the state exercises the legitimate monopoly over instrumental violence. In Nigeria, the responsibility for protecting territory lies with the federal government because the coercive authorities like defense, army, prison, police, and other paramilitary activities are in exclusive federal list. However, most state governments in Nigeria have adopted the practice of supporting the police and army in internal security through funding, donation of vehicles, arms and ammunition, communication devices, among others. Some, especially in the southeast, went to the extreme of engaging unconstitutional or extra-legal security activities, like the most dreaded Bakasi boys, whose methods were described as extrajudicial, barbaric, and primitive. No doubt, these methods were effective in reducing crime rates, but only in the short term. There is need, therefore, to adopt an enduring or a sustainable method in, tack in tackling insecurity in Nigeria. Indeed, there is present need to overhaul the entire Nigerian security architecture. This paper contains that the solution lies in adopting traditional Igbo community policing. In the pre-colonial pre Igbo society, the responsibility of securing the community is that of the entire community, or every member of the community. Beyond rhetoric, there is essentially a difference between policing the community and community policing. That's not the same thing. Um, policing the community is a top bottom approach, but community, poli community policing is a bottom top approach. In this case, the, cit the citizens are engaged, are well engaged uh, in <coughs> securing the community in terms of information sharing uh, and other community relations. So, although there were many Igbo traditional political institutions performing diffused and overlapping functions. The two primary institutions responsible for policing communities in traditional Igbo society were the age grade and masquerade secret society.
Okay. Conceptualizing and understanding community policing. Three major models of community policing are crime prevention and peace preservation policing, communications policing, and community building policing. Now that takes us uh, to, if we cannot discuss this topic without mm -hmm. going to the history, the pre-colonial history of Igbo, Igbo. In brief, um, the origin of Igbo is a subject of controversy. As a result, uh, there are many versions of the uh, origin of Igbo. Um, the Middle East version, the English version, the Oka version, Olu version, in Eda version, Bini version, <coughs> Jewish version, the Arab version. Okay. Um, but um, uh, the, the more uh, predominant ones, or what I say, the ones that uh, look more authentic are uh, the in, the in version, the Arab version, and the Bini version. And um, it depends on the with, um, geographical <coughs> locations of people. Like, he was from Monisha and um, Baro and the uh, um, Delta states um, trace their origin to, uh, to Bini. And then he was um, in the Abia states, what is today known as Abia state, and some part of Imo state and um, some part of the Ebo state trace their origin to Aro. And that of um, Anambra state and Enugu state. Uh, trace their origin to um, uh, Inri. So, the Igbo traditional political systems and institutions. Uh, the Igbo traditional political systems have been de described as stateless and asephorous, fragmented and segmented, decentralized and villagized, egalitarian and communalistic. Uh, gerontocratic, predominantly republican, directly democratic. There's no time to go into them. The role of the hatred in community policing in Igbo traditional societies. Um, in the traditional Igbo society, if, um, the, there is a limit to the age. You know, between the age of 18 and 40 are the ones that are mainly involved in community policing in traditional Igbo society to the age of 18 and 40 because uh, they are still youth in their youth. And um, they are engaged in law enforcement, maintenance of law and other security, the bridges and the community, night wash, and the defying, apprehending, and prosecuting persons suspected of committing crimes. Then the role of mass press secret society in community policing in Ibo what the one we call Mau or Ibo, depending on the part of Ibo, you know, dialect. Then mass secret society was also involved in law enforcement and community policing as directed by the Council of Elders and Titles Society and title societies. So as maintenance of law and other discipline deviance or criminals through sanctions, ensuring obedience to to sanctions, imposition of fine to deviants or defaulters, keeping sovereigns over village streets and markets. A model for community policing in particular and general society. For effective crime detection, prevention, and fighting, there is need for integration, cooperation, synergy, capacity building, and confidence building. Concluding remarks. There is need, therefore, to shift from present policing of the community to community policing by Nigerian police, especially in terms of following intelligence and information sharing, and sharing, community relations, among others. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. It is undeniable fact that uh, Nigeria federalism is a creation of British. The Britain, when they came to Nigeria, discovered that although the, the reason for the adoption of federalism varies from one country to another. Unfortunately, the, the Nigerian was inherited from the colonial masters. And uh, the belief is that federalism is suitable, most especially or is the most appropriate governmental principle for countries with huge ethnic diversity. And Nigeria comprises more than 200 ethnic groups. 
And uh, based on that, we expect uh, federalism to reduce prices and uh, minimize tension among the ethnic groups in Nigeria. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of crisis is ravaging the, current, uh, the country currently. Issue of a kidnapping for ransom, protests of, you know, uh, clamor for secession by some, by some people from the eastern part of Nigeria, led by Namdi Khan, and uh, the issue of a Boko Haram killing innocent Nigeria indiscriminately. And, uh, and recently, the United Delta Boys, they have resumed their, their work, try to attack pipeline, governmental installations, and some other things. It is all this problem that has attracted the attention of this, uh, of this paper. And the fact that when you look at federalism, case where analysis still remains the reference point for any nation, when he said the method of dividing power so that the general and regional governments are each within a sphere, coordinate, and independent. And when you look at the analysis of case here, it's of the opinion that no one federating unit must be strong enough to dominate others. Then I now look at it, I look at all these problems ravaging the country, and I discover that if Nigeria is practicing true federalism, it will go a long way to reduce the problem that we are facing in Nigeria. And I will quickly run through the problems that are facing Nigerian federalism that is making it to be quasi in nature. We have the, the issue of revenue allocation. It's another problem, and the, since Nigeria inherited, and the, do not forget that the nationalists, they were, they, they, what they were after us at that time was to just gain independence. They, they were not futuristic enough to, 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 to revisit the federal system they inherited from the colonial masters. And then when you look at the revenue allocation, you discover that as a master-servant relationship, the central government is taking the larger share from the federal government uh, post. And leaving the state government, even as of now, some states will have to rely on the handouts and the largesses from the federal government before they could survive. In fact, some states will not even pay the, the salary of the workers on their payroll. So we discover that if true federalism is practiced, then the resources is given to the region, then and pay some percentage in the central government post. We discover that it will be better for them. Then here yeah, we openly observe in Nigeria that the, the central government is, is overbearing. The central government is too powerful, it's too attractive. And that is why people are ready to die, to go to the central. And we just felt if power is decentralized meaningfully, then it will be less attractive than some of the items under the exclusive legislative list that is given to the federal government will be given to the component, uh, component units. Then the issue of trade secession is another problem that we are facing. If the, the, the region is giving some duties and responsibility. Then the idea they will know that this thing belongs to them. The idea of focusing or putting all their problems at the doorstep of the federal government will be reduced. Then we look at the issue of state creation, even not today. So people are still clamoring for state creation, even when they are not viable enough. And they have to rely on the handout from the federal government because they survive. But people felt that it's an opportunity for them to get their share. From the, from the national cake. And that is why they clamor. Then the problematic nature of Nigerian citizenship is people are placing ethnic group above the, the entity they call Nigeria. People are loyal to their ethnic group. Nobody is loyal. They don't see Nigeria as their personal property. And that is why you see some of our leaders, they are still stealing. They are stealing because they don't see Nigeria as their personal property. And then we felt that, that is why in this paper advocated for regionalism. I, even when you look at the state, the Nigeria and the local government, they are product of injustice. They were created by the military. And uh, you observe that even the assets, when we gained independence in 1960, and you look at the items under the exclusive legislative list, there are 44 items. And uh, the concurrent, we have 28 items. In 1963, we have uh, 45 items and uh, 29 in the concurrent. But you discover that by the time the 1979 constitution, it's, it increased to 66. And when the military took over in 1966, most of these items under the exclusive legislative list 
they expunged them uh, from the concurrent legislative list. They expunged them and took them to the explicit legislative list in an attempt to arrogate too much power to themselves. And uh, in this paper, I advocated that the state should be abolished. Probably the six regions we have currently in Nigeria, it should be operating on a regional basis, hoping that the people that are agitating for secession, they will know that this thing belongs to them, and they will develop in consonance <coughs> with their values and uh, with their priority, not the federal government coming to dictate what is happening at the regional level. And when you look at local governments, it's a secondary of the relation of duty. Sometimes you visit your local government, you don't see people there. And then they said, when you are talking about ghost workers in Nigeria, that is where you find it moves. People are just using it to just get money from the central government. And at the end of the day, they, they, nothing is working. And most of this responsibility of local government, they are being performed by the, the state government. To the extent that people are even calling that the states, uh, the local government should be scratched. And uh, I discovered that if we operate on a regional basis, then any region that is interested in creating their province, their country, their local government will do so and will fund it. Then when you look at the issue of uh, state police, I think it's, it, it, the idea of regional controlling the police that will, be, that will be managing the security in that area, I think it's, it's, it's important. The situation, you, you, you recruit people from that area who knows the terrain, not that somebody will be posted from Mondo State to Fakano, doesn't know the terrain, doesn't know what is happening there. The idea, some people are against this idea because the fact that the state governments make use of the state police to, to oppress the, 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 the opposition parties. But is the federal government not using the state police to oppress any state that is not uh, that is being controlled by another party? So if we leave it that way, and when you look at the southwest region, the First Republic, you discover that the, the Western region was developing at a pace at that time. This revealed us to understand that uh, there was a television station in Ibadan before France. And at that time, the region celebrated two lanes. By now, such a region should, should be celebrating eight lanes by now. So we just felt that that is what we usher in development. And I, in the exclusive legislative list, I suggested that uh, in the paper that we should leave only 26 items under the exclusive legislative list, then the remaining should be given to the to the region to legislate upon as area of uh, jurisdiction. And I felt that this will go a long way to reduce the conflicts. The people that are clamoring for secession will not clamor. And uh, if there is any problem, they will know that it, it, it will be solved regionally. And when you look at the issue of unemployment, it, it, it will be better to create unemployment rather than putting the thing uh, at the center level. Because the central government is overbearing, as I said the other time. I just felt that, look at the old problems. If true federalism is adopted, and that will go a long way to, to reduce the problem that is, the country is currently facing. Thank you for this. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is uh, Dr. Kenneth. I, my question is to the presenter <coughs> on the community policy. I think, uh, well, we will not maybe because of time, we may not have been able to actually get uh, the full sequence of the explanation of the issue. But I want to say that from what you've uh, stated so far, that what could be then the relevance of the issue of community policing as you explained, taking into consideration, one, the nature of security challenge that we are having today. Two, a method of crime prevention and control as it is today in our society back in Nigeria. Three, the nature of the society as against the traditional Igbo society. Today, the society can never be compared to the traditional Igbo society your paper tend to capture. And even within the context of the current information challenges, we're talking about technological advice, the criminals are more technologically advanced than the police. You know, not to talk of the mere villagers you refer to as they had you think that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next one. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nietzsche. 
is, is it possible to address the issue of community policing without addressing first the democratic deficit of the Nigerian state? Okay. Uh, federalism is. What is, what do you mean by true federalism? Is it just a blanket reference to Casey West's analysis? Okay. So uh, it would be good if that paper engage, uh, you know, authors, Nigerian authors, for instance, or Bafemi Oro comes readily to mind, you know. But that will give you, you know, some kind of contextual <coughs> understanding of how the Nigerian state operates in the first place. And now we can then begin to outline what federalism ought to be within the context of the Nigerian state. Thank you very much. Sorry, I came in late, but uh, I was able to pick one or two things from what the last speaker said. Uh, one, I think it's also a reference to the context where you said that is <coughs> the issue of uh, true federalism. I always find it difficult conceptually mm -hmm. to understand what this true federalism is. In fact, I discountenance the use of the word true federalism because there's no, you know, no federal system that is uh, ideal, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, relevant to all spectra. You know, of nations and uh, you know societies, as well as even that, I mean uh, historical uh, periods. So I believe, uh, uh, for me, when we talk, I talk about federalism, I always qualify it as functional federalism, mm -hmm. functional federalism. Mm -hmm. And you know, this will now be contextualized in terms of what is functional to you, mm -hmm. and not be functional to me. And at so a particular time. I, at a particular time, and so on and so forth. And it also gives you know uh, room for. The adjustment you are talking about, you know, what is the relative power distribution between the federal and the state? That is one. The second thing is uh, this concept, your concept of um, Nigerian state is not, you know, possessed or owned by either Nigerians or uh, the political leaders. And I thought actually what will happen is uh, the, the, the reverse is the case. If they have, they, they have, I mean, people have possessed Nigeria. As, his, as their own personal or private property. And that's why they can steal it, yeah. you know, um, to such an extent that, you know, they believe that maybe there is impunity in the country, in the polity. The state is weak. You know, everybody who goes, I mean, I, I talk about, you know, the high level of competition for state power. People are actually going there because they believe the person who, was, who is there is no more qualified than them to occupy the space and that, you know, if you are there, you can use the state to the extent that you like. So I believe that actually what we have is a state that is already possessed, owned by the political leaders and to such an extent that they actually also try to make it impossible for others to access it. Thank you. Let's take uh, one more, we have a response, then we take a second set of questions. Okay, <coughs> thank you so much. Uh, you have pointed out in your presentation, that is the first speaker, that there is general insecurity in the country, and that's why you are advocated for state police. But I want to know from you, the general inse insecurity we have in, in the country, uh, Boko Haram militancy, have you taken time to know who give these people arms, who feed them, because most of these people are unemployed. Who sponsored them? What are we doing to fish out those that sponsor these people? The issue of uh, federalism, you advocated for regionalism as a solution of uh, research control ag agitation and what have you. How can regionalism curtail the problem of suppression? and debasement of mankind, poverty we have in Nigeria. As regards to the comment passed by uh, Professor VC that the state in Nigeria is weak, I don't subscribe to that notion. The state is not weak anywhere in the world. It's weakened by either domestic or international players. And that is why even the institutions of governance are weakened. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm not unaware 
<coughs> that uh, the modern state is complex. Um, I because I've just summarized it, I factored these things in my paper. Yes, the modern society is more complex and uh, crime is now more sophisticated than before. Uh, but I'm not saying just, I'm saying adapting it, you know, um, uh, 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 remodernizing it, you know, to solve the problem of uh, today's complex uh, society. So I'm not talking of uh, just, just like, you know, transplanting it just as original as uh, it was in the past, but uh, I, I mean um, uh, um, improving upon it <coughs> to tackle the modern problem of uh, insecurity in the modern society, uh, the current insecurity in the modern Nigerian society. And then uh, in the case of the second question, um, um, committee for the policy is a uh, uh, part and parcel of democracy. It's, you know, the one advantage of it is that uh, it will increase um, uh, popular participation, as uh, participation in politics. But when you engage the members of the age groups, you know, uh, in in issue of security, you know, they become part and parcel of uh, the uh, democrat democratic process at the grassroots level. Then um, the issue of the third question, um, you know, issue of militancy and um, students. Um, when you look at it, um, you find out that um, one, one thing, what the import of one import of uh, community policing is that um, because those people who are involved in community policing are from the community, they will be able to know if, for example, those who are involved in pipeline finalization. I think uh, Jonathan tried to uh, apply it to some extent, but uh, it has been ab uh, abandoned by the present administration. Now they know those people, so uh, they know where to get them. Uh, you know, uh, one advantage of community policy is in preventing, more in preventing than fighting crime. You know, and also the uh, issue of um, um, the criminals in the society. They know them. They know them more than the. They know their own more than the police. So uh, in the advantages for them in, in this case is that they will be able to nip uh, uh, their, their plot in the boat you know, before you know, the, uh, they can uh, uh, act on it. <coughs> so that is, um, I believe, um, without uh, the able to answer your question. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you very much. Thank you. The idea of uh, true federalism, scholars have argued over the years that uh, we can't find true federalism all over the world. But the truth of the matter is that even the modern government that we practice in Nigeria, uh, if we are to follow what we have, probably we should be practicing the traditional system. We borrow these things, there's no doubt about it. And uh, if we are borrowing federalism to some extent, I just felt that the principles the principles to some extent should be strictly adhered to. When we are talking about federalism, we are talking about equity, we are talking about fairness, we are talking about rule of law, and the moment we have all these elements in the true federalism, I just felt that. What of when they are absent? <laughs> No, these are even numeric pieces. They are numeric pieces. What is that to you? Maybe you know, injustice on somebody else. Yes. Okay. So I think I mean let's try to see whether this uh, functional the idea of functional federalism. I, yes, I, I think so. Yes, I think I work up. It's better you actually take pros position first. Yes, sir. Just to enrich the work mm -hmm. and make I mean, it more scientific. scientific. Yes. What I mean by personal property, what I'm talking about is that this is my cap. If I see this cap as my cap, then I think I, think I will wash it. When I need to wash it, I will take care of it. The way I I think but you've not seen the local government chairman saying, and this is my local government chairman, is that the nation, that a whole lot of the population of the country is shut out. 
And so those, I mean, that is not a variance. It's not contradictory to the concept of a few people possessing. hijacking and possessing this thing. Yes. There are two different uh, concepts you're talking about. The primary issue should be addressing it from the point of alienation. Yes. That people are alienated, and so yes. allegiance is good. Also under, and it is uh, stated. Exactly. Yes, and it's so good. We will come back to take more questions. We have a new presenter, and we must accommodate him. What we try to do in the paper is to examine the political impacts of uh, the liberalized, globalized economy system on commodity-dependent African states, using Nigeria as a case study. In contrast to the extant assumption that all countries are better off under the regime of globalized economy, uh, this study, uh, study find out that developing countries that depend on resources since revenue. Though uh, true commodity exports uh, to global markets are in a precarious position, they are in their street because of their lack of uh, institutional and structural uh, capabilities to engender, to engender, consolidate, and sustain the gains from the commodities exportation. Therefore, dependence on commodity revenue creates an atmosphere of lack of cognizance of the ecological impact on the inhabitants of the resources uh, excavation regions. Uh, it is imperative to know that the commodity exportation is not the problem per se, that's what we say. Rather, it is the dependence which results from opportunities offered by globalization to export billions of barrels of oil, as the case of Nigeria, that dissuades the commodity revenue dependent African countries from focusing inwardly, inwardly on their numerous human and non pollutant national resources. In the Nigerian Niger data case, for example, the people in the oil rich region suffer ecological loss, and the government, rather than making concerted efforts to alleviate their burden, choose to tighten up the security apparatuses. Consequently, the poverty ridden people who are alienated from their resource wealth opted for a violent option to either succeed or get the central government to address their problems. Unfortunately, due to lack of institutional capacity and capability, the government policies discourage economic diversities. The loss for primitive accumulation of wealth at all levels inhibits scientific, technological, and economic development explorations. Thus, in the final analysis, the study recommends that uh, developing countries like Nigeria need to create an amenable economic environment to foster interest in other sectors of the economy, such as science, technology, communication, transportation, and mechanized agriculture. If the majority of the youth are employed, violence will be less attractive. And that cannot happen unless the government realizes the inevitable need for economic diversification and reduces its reliance on resources money as the main source of its capital generation. Our creativity will not try if the Nigerian government continues to depend on the resource revenue, which invariably alienates the people and incapacitates the institutional and structural capabilities of the state. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The current issue of the security in Nigeria can be addressed from the from lessons of our indigenous culture and tradition. As, as a way of presentation of the introduction, uh, the methodology security, conventional security and challenges in Nigeria, uh, establishing the basis for indigenous culture and traditions in security and architecture, <coughs> exploring alternative security architecture and rules of indigenous culture and traditions, challenges and prospects in conclusion. Uh, Security has remained one of the major issues on the front line of uh, discourse since the return of Nigeria to constitutional rule in 1999. In fact, the 2015 general election was lost and won on the critical issue of security. Various strategies adopted so far 
which range from the conventional security apparatus to the, the use of mercenaries remain largely futile in combating the various security breaches in the country. Uh, this paper gives for a community-oriented security approach that will explore aspects of the cultural values and traditions of the people for wider acceptability. This is especially valuable against the backdrop that most Nigerians still live under the influence of cultural traditions and relate really better with the later than foreign institutions. During the experiences from uh, various parts of the country, the paper examines the potential synergistic advantage of deploying modern security apparatus along the line, the time-tested uh, cultural ethics and channel of security communication, including neighborhood watch. The findings suggest that community-oriented security measures engender trust, support, and completion of communities who perceive such measures as their own, as against contemporary alienated Western-oriented measures. Community-oriented security measures also promote rapid and uh, enhanced intelligence gathering and overall, overall effectiveness of security architecture. This paper concludes that effective government oversight over such community-oriented security initiatives is inevitable to guide against exploitation by the powerful, pursuing personal and selfish agenda, and discourage human rights abuses. Uh, the study conducted using quantitative and qualitative data, uh, including uh, the quantitative data, including interview of members of uh, some of these uh, non conventional security groups. Uh, we look at security from the perspective of the uh, non military parameters alone. That's essentially. Uh, security issue has gone beyond just talking about the uh, military. It's also about the people. And so that is uh, central to our argument in this paper. So for us, the people must be central to any security strategy for such to be sustainable. And the paper attempts to situate the people, especially the local populace, that constitute about 70% of the population in Nigeria in the country's security uh, architecture, uh, at least by drawing from indigenous uh, uh, culture and traditions of the people. So we look at the various security, conventional security apparatus, uh, the, those that are for crime fighting, and the, the specialized agencies like NDLA and all that, TFCC, NAVDA, the military, the state, the, uh, the uh, national immigration service, civil defense and all that. Uh, then we observe starting challenges, the colonial origin of the structure of regional practices uh, and other traditions, excessive centralization of the structure and operation, contrary to the tenets of federal system of government that the country is supposed to be operating, uh, continuation of the archaic criminal philosophy of strangers, policing strangers, corruption, ethnicity, Nepotism, which generally has affected the total of Nigerian society, uh, particularly a threat in the Nigerian police and other security agencies. Then the insufficient numbers of even security personnel to police the country. And so we try to establish the basis for indigenous cultural and traditions uh, in security architecture. Uh, there's a recognition of the alienation of the people uh, from the giving voluntary support to the police and other security operatives. Uh, the people refer, regard the security operative as uh, as uh, strangers to be avoided like plagues. Uh, then this alienation is worsened by extreme uh, marginalization of some groups, even within the state, the Nigerian state, in a way that government presence defined in terms of social economic development and infrastructure facilities are lacking in those areas, thereby giving room for the emergence of diverse groups occupying public space and contending with state for the maintenance of public order. So this created even the basis for the, uh, the, the, the non-conventional uh, security operators even to contend with the state apparatus. So there is also the contention between the manifestation of the forces of globalization and the conventional security infrastructure 
and the reassertion of local authority with the increasing demands for local traditional community sensitive security systems for the country. And so we look at uh, some of the alternatives that, uh, uh, that are available. Or uh, look at religious and security church peace, such as the East Bank groups and the ethnic peace, uh, like Ujua People's Congress. Uh, then the, there's establishment of uh, private security companies operating along public private security networks, operating alongside police, military, and navy personnel in the country. Then we have a, a, a particular group of vigilante group of Nigeria. It's a non-governmental group which consists of volunteer members committed to people-driven security arrangement in the country. Then the last uh, one that we examine is the indigenous vigilante group that uh, revolves around hunters and all that. And so we look at the fact that uh, these groups have been uh, effective at their own level in one way or the other. Uh, even looking at the situation in the northeast now, uh, there is uh, uh, no evidence to suggest that uh, uh, the so-called civilian joint task force has been very instrumental into some of the advances made by the Nigeria military. Uh, so going to challenges, we observe that uh, the agenomonic politics, no doubt, uh, creates a problem of double uh, standard in terms of recognition and no recognition and all that. Then there is also possibility of exploitation of uh, these groups for personal political objectives. And so we, uh, the prospects, we look at the fact that uh, we, there's no doubt that Nigerian community, Nigerian society is still highly traditional. And so there's a need to bring in uh, the, this traditional uh, oriented uh, community uh, sensitive uh, security system into uh, the modern, uh, to complement modern uh, security architecture and efforts. And uh, that uh, even in the developed world, uh, indigenous policing is still uh, recognized in some parts of the world, in the case of uh, USA and Alaska. And so there is nothing that says that uh, we, we cannot uh, uh, follow that line of action. And so there is a need for us to all have a framework for their participation in formal security. And then the, there is a need for uh, this uh, outfit to guide against the Beijing federal uh, authority. So finally, this paper argues for a community-oriented security approach that will explore aspects of the cultural values and traditions of the people for wider acceptability. This is especially uh, valuable against the backdrop of the most, the fact that most Nigerians still live under the influence of cultural traditions and they live better with data than foreign institutions. I want to stop there because of the time. Thank you very much. I, I think I have other of these uh, recommendations on security. First, uh, they have not taken cognizance of the level of education in the society. Um, second, they are not taking cognizance of the salary these police officers earn. So for somebody to dedicate his life to protecting you, and you are paying him 30,000 a month. It's more than 30,000. Now, no, that's now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's 1,000. Let's take 50,000 states. It's just an example. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm not. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No. 50,000 so for somebody fine. to protect you. It's fine. Yeah. What is that? The money is fine. No, that's good. Yes, yeah. 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 For, for somebody to protect you. I don't think this is fair enough to the police. Uh, secondly, the education of these police people in our society and the attitude, attitudinal change that we have not taken notice of for a police to be drunk very early in the morning and to be smoking marijuana. And there are no laws to stop this police officer behaving Contrary to uh, yeah. rules. Yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's a fundamental issue that we have to address. And, uh, and uh, for the scientists, political scientists, 
I, I, I think you need to read the uh, Baba Olo's uh, People's Republic in detail. Because when you talk of federalism, people have to define their own set of federalism. And what made the military system to be, be practiced is the fear of domination, which federalism uh, we had was, uh, was uh, uh, introduced. And uh, you look at the imbalance of educational system. In the West, there's more uh, higher educational uh, level than in the North. Then in the East, I cannot say they are the same with the South. South. So the kind of federalism you are talking about must be such that the educational system and the cultural aspect of it in which Yoruba people would like to see themselves as Yoruba and govern themselves. The Hausa people want to see themselves as as Hausa as basic, on the basis of their language. They will be able to communicate more effectively. So federalism has to be defined by Nigerians because the way we are today, that's why we don't have uh, commitment to Nigeria project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Adonis. I just want to quickly just comment on when the um, agenda that presented on the, uh, on the community policy. I just want to, I don't know whether this paper also addressed the issue of contradiction in human community policy. I inserted an example of um, the Niger data system being abandoned by the present system. Well, uh, uh, I'm sure he's aware of the, the, uh, what they call it, the problem. I mean, that system has also inflicted on the nation because uh, that's also weakened the institution of the state. Because you are aware of, you are familiar with the case of Tompolo and other districts. Because, uh, I mean, using people to, as a community, you know, because who are the people? Who are the people? That are being used. So it's also has community police also has its own contradiction. Serious one. So and we have to also, it's not something that we can, we can make general. So we have to be very specific on the type of community policing we want. Must they come from that community? Must they come from the, you know, would they be changed? I think so what type of school do they go and so on? So it's not as, as simple as a, uh, we have to portray. Then um, the on the the federalism, I'm sure a lot of uh, the scholars here have also commented on that. Well, I don't know whether the speaker will also look at the, even the, the amendment and enactment of, uh, of law. The, 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 for example, the, the Senate and the House of Fred, when it comes to their interest being this, because uh, this sort of regionalism that is being prepared, is being suggested, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's not feasible because no states wants to lose its autonomy. Now, as it is now, you understand? Uh, if you look at the case of, uh, even in the open state, you know, Ijebu are still asking for a state. So everybody wants to control, even though most of these states, as we have said, are not viable. Mm -hmm. So they have to, it's not, it's not something you can just, uh, that will be something that will be practical, you know, that will make these things uh, uh, work here. And then the last one is the application of rule of law. We are very, they will say we are very religious in Nigeria, but we don't obey any rule of law. We don't obey that. You know, we are, they don't even go to church and mosque. They obey their laws. So we have to look at that area. So that some of these things are not so important. Thank you. Yes, Thank you very much. I'll try to write down my question. I'm talking to the second presenter. Um, you, you proceed from an Ethiopian premise of a federalism, as, of federalism as a cure to all of Nigeria's political and economic problems. Um, I want to find out if there are examples, especially within countries that share the same political and economic history of, of Nigeria, where um, a, the truth of federalism as you claim has worked. Secondly, I understand that there are many literatures that, has, that speak to federalism in Nigeria yeah. from the premise of Casey Well argument that you have raised. I want to know whether you are, um, there's any unique contribution that your paper has to that 
that voice, or you're merely beating the same drum mm. as uh, referred to by this abundant literature on federalism in Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Please. Now, how do you separate the issue of community policing from a self serving political agenda? Yeah. Mm. Because the problem that I think we, the challenge that I think we have primarily in Africa is this tendency to import wholesale ideas and concepts that we have not properly digested and properly deconstructed. And then we want to, you know, bring those things into the context of our own uh, realities. And that, that always falls flat on its face. And one of the reasons I've always I've advocated over the years, and one of the things I've advocated over a period of time now is that our current democratic system, especially in Nigeria, the way it is, is not something we're right for. But that's, that's, that's an issue for the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, what is the value of or the effectiveness of a security architecture, for instance, or community policing again, you know, I want to break that break both down to yeah. the same. When the issues that cause consistent breakdown of law and order, mm -hmm. insecurity, uh, or insecurity, ethnicity, poverty, mm -hmm. literacy that uh, you know uh, Prof talked about, social stratifications, political demagoguery, yeah. uh, you know unemployment. Now, yeah. what those are the basic yeah. things that actually cause breakdown of law and order. And if you don't address those issues, even the communities itself, I mean the communities themselves rather, actually get more more uh, compromised mm -hmm. yes. because you look at what is happening even in Niger Delta. It's all about the whole idea, and that brings me to you know your your the issue of resource. I mean of this uh, community policing thing in the Niger Delta, the security thing. We all know what it has become. Oh, yeah. It's a national mess right now. And I don't know what would have happened if the government had not even discontinued that process. It's the only thing that could make one person collect for land yeah. to build a maritime university. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of land it is mm -hmm. that he collected 37 billion naira for. Now that's that's those are some things that I just you know, and that's all because mm -hmm. you want people to control resources. And the final thing is this: at the bay, at the very base of all this clamor. Or federalism, whether you call it true federalism or whatever federalism was, is this issue word control? Mm -hmm. And then the question is control for what? Is it control for the greater good of the collective or control for a personal to pursue a personal agenda? Again, I bring the issue of the United Delta into it because we all know that. The money that was, the settlement that was paid for the Niger Delta thing, mm -hmm. which was shared, you know, given to families and individuals, mm -hmm. and on the average, you know, individuals got like about 600,000 Naira each. What has that done for the economic status of the people? Because at the end of the day, it's like we want more. Mm. There's always this clamor for more. It's our oil, we control it. It's our cocoa, we control it. And the essence of that is not for a collective vision, mm -hmm. it is just for personal mm -hmm. aggrandizement. Thank you. Let's take uh, the last uh, comment. <coughs> okay, my question goes to the last speaker as in regards to security if you're taking yeah. cultural aspects in our various communities. So uh, my question is this. Like in my own traditional society, the T people of the United States who have no traditional rules. We had our state was a stateless in many views. But there was enough security because various heads of households come together. For instance, if we are coming in as a stranger to my own household and you want to go to another person's house, I will interrogate you. At most, I will escort you to that, that place to ensure that this person, this stranger is not somebody that has a hidden agenda. At that time, there was enough security. 
But by the time we started institutionalizing the kind of traditional institutions as we have today, uh, the totif, then problems started. They are the ones that control virtually everything. Within that context, based on your recommendation, then how we, are we going to have security in such uh, societies? Thank you. Okay. Now, from my paper, I try to say that we need to go back to the basics, and that is recognizing each community for what they are originally. But the uh, picture you just painted will mean that is the uh, the the the, um, the other side. You see, is the that was not the original team community. Yeah. But we still have those aspects that we can actually take into what uh, we are conversing for. That is, those aspects of the traditional community as it were, undiluted, that people still recognize it today. And then incorporate them into uh, to a kind of a, a security system that we serve us better. Just like what you say you have in team plan is what is uh, very similar to Bini, very similar to you, Bala. That is, every community, as you are coming, people want to know you, they want to recognize you, and all that. So these are the kind of things that we are conversing for, that we should bring all those things into the, into, uh, bring them as leading block of what will be our security system. And that until we get to that level, we are not going to make any progress. Because people up to today still see the conventional security system as alien. In spite of the fact that we have over 100 years of uh, existence as uh, I've been relating with them, people still see them as alien. People still don't relate to them. When they see the policeman, the, the security man, and all that, the, the people run away. But if you want to get, uh, if you really want to get the people to talk about what's happening, just go to the Emir's Palace, just go to the uh, Obama's Palace, and all that. You will get to know what is going on, and people will tell you who is in charge of this or who is affecting this community and all that. And so there is no way we can we can we can relegate that to the background and we think that we're going to make any progress in Nigeria when it's going to security. Thank you very much. I, I, I think I welcome all the contributions and we okay them to make the paper for the betterment of the paper. Good. Then uh, to Dr. Shola I I actually I lay my hands on latest literatures on the issue because time is not story. Mm -hmm. So that was why I just mentioned Casey mm -hmm. I mentioned that what Miss Beru, are you are there, a lot of them like that actually work in Fedanzi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. That's one. Okay, um I mean, I did not pretend my own brother my own brother of like community security and community policing as I I put that in the paper will solve all the problems of this community. What I'm trying to say is to go a long way to reduce it uh, to great extent. Um, the, the nearness to implementing it in Nigeria was um, in Anambra State under P2P. And uh, if, if you been sitting in Anambra State, you agree with me that uh, crime rate has gone down very well in Anambra State. And uh, what he did, because he threw it, he created jobs. He created jobs for the youths. He was paying them, and um, there was a synergy between them and the police. The police was involved in capacity building, training them, but they are not involved in the extrajudicial killings. What they do is to arrest them and hand over to police. So um, uh, uh, that was not, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, what happened then under Jonathan was actually, I'm saying it was an extent. So thank you. Thank you, uh, presenters. Let me just try to see if we can distill some commonalities from all of this. I mean, no question about the fact that all the three, four actually, yeah. all the four papers are related. They're all I mean, addressing the same issues. They speak to the issues of uh, the crisis of development in Nigeria and uh, the things that uh, we require to do. Uh, some of the papers uh, took uh, the 
the discourse from the perspective of security and the fourth one uh, from the dimension of uh, resource generation and uh, allocation. Uh, I, I think the baseline is that the Nigerian system is not functional. Right? The, yeah. the, it's common. I mean, uh, we're on the same page on that. Uh, 10.5 million children out of school, mm -hmm. uh, the highest in the world today, uh, in spite of the, the some of the behavioral uh, challenges of the people in the Niger Delta, what we have done in the Niger Delta is, is, is scandalous, oh, yeah. absolutely scandalous in terms of the damage of the environment. Uh, but I think the, 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 the preponderance of opinion is uh, to the effect that you must look at the structure of, of what we have. The Nigerian state is, uh, and the security apparatus that are in existence. Why have they not functioned? Why have they not failed? Is the state weak or has the state been weakened? Weak. As somebody said, the state that is weak is also weak. <laughs> we must look at that. We must also, we must also take the discourse and the discussion a little bit away from insecurity in terms of criminal and criminalization. You are going to talk about human security. You didn't get there. I think that's the essence of your intervention. It's very important to focus on human security. We have to put the very, the most functional security apparatus in place, and the fundamental issues of existence are not addressed. You probably would not have the type of comfort that uh, that uh, you, you, you expect. Talking about structure, I also expect that we should have addressed the nature of the structure of the police in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is probably one of the few federal republics that has a single, highly centralized yeah. police yeah. system. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen any other. Yeah. And so, do you have such a structure and expect it to police 170 million people? Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. We <laughs> must be able to find uh, uh, ways of uh, handling that. Uh, there's also the argument that we need some uh, uh, fairer clarification of concepts. Yeah. So I will just deploy them. Community mm -hmm. policy, what exactly are we talking about? Mm -hmm. We have suggested that rather than talk of federalism, they have to talk of functional yeah. federalism, which allows you a uh, uh, very, very broad uh, the non conventional thing we're talking about. The issue of adaptability is critical. Mm -hmm. What you had in the old traditional, is it adaptable? Yeah, How do you yeah, translate yeah, it yeah, to the modern? Yeah, you must be able to address those issues. <coughs> uh, to, 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 uh, uh, and the discourse on federalism, yeah. I would be very comfortable if you bring a comparative perspective to it. I think that's the essence of Dr. Uh, Shunibi's uh, intervention. Uh, let's look at the Federal Republic like India. Uh, India hasn't experience a good return, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't have tranquility all the time, but India has survived. And, yeah. uh, India has administered about 15 elections since 1947. The system has not broken down completely. What are those things that are responsible for the reset of the Indian federalism? Uh, when we talk of regionalism, we also can borrow a bit from what is happening on the continent. Look at Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. After Eritrea broke out, after four decades of war, yeah. Ethiopia wrote a constitution that came up in the, Ethiopia yeah. wrote a new constitution that allows some national groups that desire to yeah. break away to go. It's interesting that not since they, I mean up to yeah. now, none yeah. has indicated the desire to go. Because they have created a basis that makes everybody to feel yeah. that they are part of this system. That probably is the type of thing this talking about. But we also must be alive to the lessons of South Sudan, mm -hmm. which is a huge embarrassment to Africa. Uh, so when we're talking about moving away from centralism, we must also be careful. So I think we have we will have a lot of rigor if we bring in some comparative perspectives to this uh, uh, to these issues. Uh, and of course, there is no question about the fact that you still need to mind the literature and use what information you have to strengthen your papers. I think we can take that to be a, yeah. a solution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm aware that uh, we still have some time, am I correct? And so the discussion can still go on. Yeah. Yeah. They are not necessarily directed at the presenters. I, but let's enjoy the two, three minutes that we have left. I just want yes. to add one or two things more. That the, what is the role of ICT in policy? 
Today, I can stay in the United States here and monitor my house at Aribidi. Mm. Aribidi uh, is in where? It's in the United <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> 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 Because uh, uh, ICT is very, very... The technology generally. Yeah, technology generally. Yes. But you cannot talk of it without the stable power. No, but you see, we are moving forward in terms of technological awareness. And it is important that we take note of the significance of it here in the United States that I'm very conversant with. Uh, people who are in, in their houses, they have police number. If they see any stranger moving around uh, the environment, no, they just call police. And we, are, we are seeing some strange, strange movement here. So, in Nigeria, uh, you may say we have uh, this police uh, numbers you call. Are they functional? So. The, but then the, 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 the journey is not the destination. No, it's it's yeah. like that we are moving. Yes, we are moving we right there. Uh, we we'll get there someday. Yeah, yes, we will get there. Then our leaders, are there examples, good examples of people who obey rules and order? No. A local government chairman gets to a roadblock, police by the police, and he will not stop. Oh yeah. Okay? Here, I remember uh, was it two years ago, the deputy governor of Texas uh, in Houston, I think, uh, he violated the traffic rule. And then when the police stopped him, he showed his ID card. And the police officer said, what does this uh, have to do? <laughs> and you say you are going to law. You are the one to give a good example yeah. to obey the rule. Okay? And if you continue like this, you go to prison. Can a police officer do that in Nigeria? To a deputy governor? A so, counselor, a counselor. No, no, no. So, that's, that's my... It's a whole law. He said, no, yes. Yeah. Then, uh, Jonathan, he told us that he knew uh, that uh, Boko Haram people are in his government, in his house, in his... That, and he could not uh, arrest any of them. He was on top of the situation. He was on top of the situation. I see what Nigeria has become. So uh, that's probably part of the weak thing. Okay. Yes. 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 But I also like to sound a note of warning uh, in relation to all of these humongous figures that were. I think we should carry and allow the cause to convict mm -hmm. before we begin to deploy those figures. I have my reason to suspect some of them that somebody had to pay 34 billion for a parcel of land. That doesn't seem reasonable. So let's let's wait and let the cause compete yeah. before we begin to deploy those figures. Yes. Yes. So that we, yeah, don't, but, but, but we don't get I mentioned the political yes. of these politicians. Uh, no, sometimes, Prof, I think also the refusal of some of the people uh, who have been accused to face justice gives an indication of culpability. If, if I know that I'm clean and I have so nothing to hide, I will go face the law. It depends. I, so, I, I don't want us to go into that. If, if for instance, you, you face the law and the court says you should be granted bail, and the state or the president is saying you cannot do no, go. Mm. So, anyway, I, I was not even going to, to be my intervention, but mm. actually, I wanted to again interrogate this concept of leadership. Because, because, <laughs> hey, the, 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 the session that is uh, formally, yeah. almost formally, and they will just say to the end of 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 the Go, you know, we don't have do some introspection and actually interrogate ourselves and ask ourselves within my little space, what kind of leadership am I showing? Because what you see out there is just a projection of certain persona that used to be anonymous, innocuous individuals.
that nobody knew about. Everybody who is a governor today was just an ordinary yeah. neighbor, you know, an ordinary next door neighbor to somebody. What was he at that time? What kind of person was he? How did he manage the environment, the little environment that he had control over? And I think this, uh, some of the issues we also begin to extrapolate and project to our discourse on leadership. Before we begin to always say, oh, whoever is in a position, because leadership is not a position, it's a disposition. So if the disposition is not right, when you get to the position, you have only had a platform yeah. for amplifying yeah. your dysfunctionality. Yeah. That, that's so, so that you guys should consider the little space over here. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Oh, I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. We must finish by 12.15 because some people forgot to check out of the hotel. And we just call the hotel, they said by 1 o'clock, if you don't check out, they're going to pay for an additional day. So, in the interest of those who forgot to check out, we must finish by 12.15. Absolutely, we So that they won't get into trouble. Yes. But, this, are they, but if, if, if they are Nigerians, we don't have to worry. <laughs> they have so much money. I think it's a good point to bring the discussion to yeah. close. But let me just again counsel yes. that uh, the presenters should take advantage of the uh, National Conference Report 2014. Yes. Yes. I know that some of yeah. these issues were yeah. thoroughly yeah. addressed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it will help uh, watch. Exhaustively. Please, I have a small announcement. Absolutely. I apparently misplaced my. Um, uh, conference bag. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody who had additional or has seen a, a, a bag lighting around, okay. <laughs> so please give it to me. Thank you very much. Thank you for this. Was it yesterday? No. Just, uh, yes. No, because I know yesterday they picked it too and gave it no, to you. No, not for my yesterday. On behalf of this very distinguished audience, may I thank uh, uh, our presenters for a job well done. Thank you, thank you very much.